Hidden beneath the seas, the walls of a great city are visible. There are those who believe the architects were the vanguards of a society that took root in a new land. Who built it and why are still unknown. Perhaps these ancients knew more of the world than modern men imagine. In any civilization, there are some who take risks, men who reach beyond safe borders. The passing of adventurers may be signaled by structures on the land, marks in the earth, ciphers in stone, like the curious ruin on a bleak New Hampshire hilltop. It is called Mystery Hill. Who built it and why? evidence suggests that North America was colonized long before the birth of Christ. Who were the colonists? How did they come to this wilderness? This series presents information based in part on theory and conjecture. The producer's purpose is to suggest some possible explanations, but not necessarily the only ones, to the mysteries we will examine. The legends of Native Americans tell of the first men who came into the world. They were brothers to wolves, or sired by the very stars. Men, it was said, were animals, and animals were men. And that is how the Indians saw their own beginnings. Beyond Indian legend, we really know very little of those first men. Time and again, we find marks of their passing. Who were they? Where did they come from? What drove them to probe the wilderness and build outposts? Too many traces have been left by early wanderers. They cannot be ignored or easily explained away. In scattered enclaves, a fragment of what had been built may survive. It will become a small piece of our past, an item of evidence that leads researchers to the discovery of what truly occurred. When 17th century Europeans colonized what is now New Hampshire, they found that someone had been there before them. At the time, no one thought much about the stone ruin near New Salem. They called the curious stone structure Mystery Hill and let it go at that. Mysterious it was, totally unlike anything else the Europeans would encounter in their settlement of North America. It would not be until 300 years had passed that investigators would begin to solve the riddle of Mystery Hill. Their research would challenge some cherished ideas about the past. It's easier to cling to traditional beliefs than accept the possibility that we really know very little about our past. But if new ideas are sometimes uncomfortable, they can also be exciting. In the past year, evidence has been uncovered which suggests that there was a highly civilized presence on the shores of America thousands of years ago. The land called America was not devoid of people when the Europeans came. Europeans called the natives savages. The natives called themselves Ottawa and Cree, Mohawk and Seminole, Dakota, Pawnee and Kiowa. They were as unprepared to meet Europeans as the settlers were to understand them. Whatever their common origin might have been, the old and new world peoples had little in common. For the most part, the American Indian was still in the Stone Age. They revered their physical environment and lived close to it. 
they built lightly on the land. And although they banded together into great nations of hunters and warriors, their cities had no more lasting impact than a carpet of bright leaves in an autumn forest. Mystery Hill is not in the manner of buffalo hide teepees. It was built to last. Indians of this region did not build in stone. They lacked even the tools to do so. Mystery Hill would have been destroyed years ago if it were not for the efforts of Bostonian Robert Stone. Stone bought up the ruin so that it could be preserved for scientific study and the enjoyment of tourists. They, came and got, you know, they, they would put the ashes in there, in other words. That's what we assume, yeah. yeah. Was this standing when you came here? Yes. Professor Hans Holzer has come to learn what Stone knows of the site. A noted author and student of antiquity, Holzer will attempt to answer the questions, who passed this way and why? The American Southwest is an arid land. Its native inhabitants found it difficult to scratch out a hold here. They built cities of mud brick, backed against cliffs for protection. Life hasn't changed much for the inheritors of this land. Outside of a few big cities of the Southwest, men still herd livestock and try to wrench a living from the dry soil. Theirs is a rich heritage, nevertheless. We know the Pueblo Indians by their etchings in stone. Their cliff-bound apartments showed thoughtful design and careful execution. But brick is not stone. The techniques used to build the Pueblos did not build Mystery Hill. Hans Holzer and Robert Stone can find little that Mystery Hill has in common with the Pueblos of the Southwest. Its architects must have come from another place another culture. In the Medicine Bow Mountains of Wyoming can be found another curiosity in stone. It is called the Medicine Wheel. Mantled by snow much of the year, the geometric arrangement of rocks puzzled Western travelers for a long time. Most investigators are now agreed that the wheel was an Indian calendar. By the placement of stones, its makers could calculate the time remaining before the summer thaw. The very lack of a settlement area breaks the tie to Mystery Hill. The long central lane at Mystery Hill is reminiscent of some walled-in streets of ancient Europe. And where does the lane end? At a large central structure, Professor Holzer has reason to believe was a temple. Again, a slender thread which may link Mystery Hill to the great cities of ancient Europe. Might the strange visitors to Mystery Hill have crossed an ocean? We have evidence that Norsemen like Leif Erikson made epic voyages in the 10th century. Erikson was blown off course while making a passage to Greenland. The landfall he reported making is thought to have been Newfoundland. He likely touched the New World, but all evidence is that he had neither the charter nor the will to begin a colony. Five hundred years later, the Spaniards and the Portuguese would supplant the Norsemen as explorers of the sea. A leading navigator of the day was Christopher Columbus, who convinced the Spanish throne he could sail west to India. These voyages were overtures to the coming of European colonization of the Americas in the 17th century. It is certain, however, that there were ships capable of making ocean crossings long before the time of Columbus or Leif Erikson. Did the strange visitors who built Mystery Hill arrive by ship from the east? 
And is this curious design on stone the random sign of a newcomer? Or is it the hull of a forgotten ship that turned its bow into the unknown centuries ago? At a laboratory in Cambridge, Massachusetts, scientists burn a bit of charcoal found at Mystery Hill. Charcoal is largely carbon, and carbon contains minute quantities of radioactive material. This material decays at a constant rate. Knowing that, scientists can fix the age of the sample. They determine that it is at least 3,000 years old. The charcoal was found wedged between slabs of rock at Mystery Hill. The fire that produced it was lighted a thousand years before the birth of Christ. And the open question remains, but by whom? Mystery Hill, New Hampshire could not have been more aptly named. Its origins have puzzled men for centuries. Curator Osborne Stone is sure of one thing, however. The architects of Mystery Hill had an impressive knowledge of astronomy. Uh, we're standing in the astronomical center of the site, and if you want a view to the true north, you'll see a, a large standing monolith out here. It's composed of five stones, one missing that dates the site. Over to the east of us, we have a, a strange stone that's been on the wall for centuries that marks a summer sunrise. Now, if we look around to the uh, southwest, we see the uh, winter sunset stone. That was the first one that was found and, and kicked off this investigation. Stones that may have helped the strange visitors plot the seasons. They are substantial clues to the identity of the original Mystery Hill architects. The cultivation of expression. The On the Salisbury Plain in England broods a more familiar example of the kind of timekeeping function monoliths appear to have had for the ancients. To this day, some who call themselves the druids gather at Stonehenge to mark the longest day of the year. The cultivation of the it is believed that long centuries ago, druids offered up human sacrifice as part of their seasonal rituals. Sacrifice may have been part of the firmament at Mystery Hill also. You were in position for the sacrificial table that I was talking about. You were asking me about the oracle tomb. That's right. It comes out from the oracle chamber. Underneath. Stone points out a polished slab of rock. The grooves might once have run with blood to appease a god whose voice rumbled up from the earth. We used to give the oracle all the time through there, but... It appears that the builders of Mystery Hill imported their gods as well as their science. Some had theorized that Mystery Hill was the work of New Hampshire colonialists. This is when we come to the entrance of the Oracle Chamber. I think we have pictures that date back What Stone calls the sacrificial table and the recently excavated Oracle Chamber are unlikely relics of English colonialism. The chamber was discovered in the darkened recesses of Mystery Hill. Professor Holzer has seen similar sacred grottos before, complete with speaking tubes to humble the faithful. The so-called Oracle Chamber had been the work of another society, a civilization where obedience to the Delphic voices was immediate and complete. The chamber was found not in America, but amid the ancient ruins of the Mediterranean. Holzer will need more than these similarities if he is to advance his theory about Mystery Hill's strange visitors. Harvard archaeologist Barry Fell has spent years studying inscriptions and drawings from Mystery Hill and other unexplained ruins in North America. Now, what about some of these inscriptions that have been found? Uh, what do they indicate in terms of people's presences in this area? Where are they from? Well, they really tell us that America in ancient times was a melting pot of the races of Europe, just as it is today. Same peoples, peoples from uh, all parts of Europe and North Africa, living together, even speaking their own languages side by side, and writing their own inscriptions and their own writing systems. What people came here? Um, Basques from Portugal, Celts from Spain and Portugal, 
uh, Phoenicians from uh, Carthage and probably from Phoenicia itself in Syria and ancient Egyptian traders too. Why do you think these people came here? I uh, probably initially by accident. Fishermen, you know, the Portuguese people are wonderful deep sea fishermen and inevitably a fisherman is going to be blown away from land in a storm. A uh, fisherman knows how to look after himself when he's blown out to sea and in modern times very long voyages have been performed that way. So initially accidentally, later deliberately. Portugal's dorymen still ply the Atlantic in the kind of small but sturdy craft they've apparently used for centuries. That the ancestors of these fishermen were skilled sailors, few could dispute. Holzer doubts that a fisherman blown off course would attempt to build a city. He and Fell pursue another line. In other words, there's no doubt in your mind that ancient people from the Mediterranean area came and settled in New England, among other places. No doubt at all. They probably settled all that part of North America that could be reached by ship. That is to say, the whole Mississippi Valley and the branches of the Mississippi. The Mediterranean. At one time, Knossos was her capital, a jewel-like city on the island of Crete. All that's left now are the weather-worn ruins of graceful temples, courtyards, and apartments. The people of this island were called Minoans. They were heirs to Phoenician sea kings who sailed here from what is now Lebanon. The Minoans loved music and art almost as much as they loved the sea. Even their architecture had a lyrical quality. The sea never seemed far from their thoughts. They must have gloried in all its aspects. The sea brought the Minoans power and wealth. Perhaps they had commerce with other advanced civilizations now lost to us. History records that there were catastrophic earthquakes in the Mediterranean basin around 1600 BC. Gnosis was by then queen city of the Mediterranean. She may have been a haven for the refugees of doomed civilizations. If so, the influx of new citizens must have created pressure for expansion. The Minoans already had colonies on the north coast of Africa, and recent evidence discovered underwater in the Caribbean suggests that they had traveled to the Americas. It is nevertheless a radical theory that sailors from a Bronze Age culture could have dispatched the first strange visitors to the New World. Professor Fell, how do your colleagues at Harvard feel about these amazing discoveries you've made? <laughs> Very mixed feelings. My closest colleagues, who of course uh, support my work and, uh, and assist me in it, uh, have very positive feelings and uh, some other colleagues, uh, more particularly concerned with traditional aspects of archaeology, uh, so far have not supported them. My opinions. Well, how did the ancient Phoenicians get here? They had ships, Dr. Halzo, better than those available to Columbus. Here is a carving of the hull of one of them that we found at Mount Hope, Rhode Island. We have one other carving from another part of North America. And then the fact that they made the voyages is sufficiently plain from the inscriptions that they left en route. The inscriptions Professor Fell refers to are found in abundance at Mystery Hill, if one knows what to look for. Osborne Stone, who assists his cousin Robert in preserving the site, points one out to Dr. Holzer. It has come to be called the G-Stone. Holzer reads much more than a G on the weathered rock. To me, there is no question that this was written by people who spoke the ancient Phoenician language and used the Phoenician alphabet. The origin of this inscription is in the area of Phoenicia and the island of Crete, the Minoan culture, where Phoenician people settled and then became the Minoan people. Professor Holzer has found his answer to the puzzle of Mystery Hill. From a small island in the Mediterranean, to a hilltop in New Hampshire. 
It must have been an incredible journey. Everything feels right and seems to fit. The style of masonry is the same. The walled lanes are common to Knossos. One could almost imagine being on Crete if it weren't for the Yankee accents and pine trees. Many will find it hard to believe the implications of Professor Fell's painstaking research or the results of the carbon dating. But the late summer of 1976 saw two distinguished researchers joining the ranks of those who support the Minoan theory. And there were indications of more hard evidence to come. Skeptics abound in every culture. The Minoans may have found it difficult to believe there was much of a future here in America. It must have seemed so primitive. Perhaps that's why they vanished. The same curiosity which may someday take us to the stars has apparently propelled mankind throughout its long centuries of wanderings on this planet. We have evidence now that America was known to great civilizations which had become dim memories long before the birth of Christ. Much of what those strange visitors knew may be lost to us forever. The coast of America we thought of as pristine until the 15th century may have in fact been a thriving outpost of ancient commerce and exploration. We can only guess. The record of Mystery Hill was ignored for hundreds of years. It tells us that the Phoenicians may not have been the first strange visitors to America, but that they were apparently the first to build a link between the old and new worlds. The link would be broken for reasons we cannot fathom yet. Centuries later, the old world would rediscover the new. This time, the link would hold. Lost civilizations, extraterrestrials, myths and monsters, missing persons, magic and witchcraft, unexplained phenomena. In search of cameras are traveling the world seeking out these great mysteries. This program was the result of the work of scientists, researchers, and a group of highly skilled technicians.